Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, Sages and Peeps. All right. Hey, Sages. Hey, Peeps. We are coming to you with a movie review, a Netflix moment. All right. And this is Indigo Sage and Pia Talks. All right. And the movie that we are reviewing today is I Care A Lot. And it's a Netflix uh, movie. It's available on Netflix. It is directed by Jay Blakeson. Now, I'd never heard of him, but I really love this movie. And he has directed other movies such as The Disappearance of Alice Creed, Kidnapping Stella. And just by those two titles, I just felt like, okay, so he kind of likes this mystery kidnapping thing. But he also directed Pitch Perfect. Okay. And it's starring Rosamund Pike, Isa Gonzalez, and... Peter Dinklage, and Diane Wiest. Now, I love her. She has starred in Edward Scissorhands. Who doesn't like Edward Scissorhands? Uh, the Birdcage and The Lost Boys. In all three of those movies, she was a, in my opinion, a lovable mom. Okay. She was. The Lost Boys was my favorite with her in it. Okay. Plus, you well, know, back then I was in love with the two Corys. Me too. I couldn't decide which one. (laughs) Uh, But my favorite mom of hers was the Edward Scissorhands. Like she was just, she loved that little Scissorhand man. And uh, so she's also a mom in this movie. All right. So what 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 do you think, uh, Miss Pia? Um, she did a great job in this movie. Of course, she always does. She's a very talented actress, but. The standout for me was Peter Dinklage. I absolutely loved him when he was in the Game of Thrones and he could play any character. The man is gifted. Um, When he was on Game of Thrones, he had all of these pages of dialogue that he was able to deliver to us and keep us interested and on the seats of our pants, no matter what the subject was. And I just absolutely loved him. However, Rosemond Pike, she delivered. Um, She she delivered. I'm not as familiar with her, even though I did kind of recognize her face in the movie. So I know that she must have been in some other things that I've watched, but I felt that she gave a great performance. She did. She she was the perfect person to hate, like the evil witch, the wicked witch of the West or whatever. She was the perfect person to, she made you not like her. Right. She well, was there, there was a uh, little bit of a summary at the beginning. When you look it up, it says a shady legal guardian lands in hot water when she tries to bilk a woman that has ties to a powerful gangster. So that's the little tease that they give you uh, regarding this movie. And One of the things that really struck me was at the very beginning of the movie, it starts out and you hear um, uh, you hear the main character say in this world, there are two types of people. Yes. Lions and lambs. And I froze the movie because I thought about it and I said, you know what? I agree with that. There are two types of people. You're either a lion or a lioness or you're a lamb. And I tried to ask myself, what who are I? you? Yeah, exactly. And that's the that's why I froze it. I said, wait a minute, who am I? And then I think I'm a little bit of both because depending on the situation, I can definitely be a lamb. But on another situation, I am a ferocious lioness. As a matter of fact, I usually tell my friends when I have conversations with my friends, they usually describe me as a mama grizzly. It just depends on the situation. I can get real grizzly with you, but mostly I try to be as nice as possible. Maybe as nice as a honey badger. And you know how nice they are. Not nice. (laughs) I'm just saying. (laughs) The same, I went through the same uh, 
questioning realization, but mine was much shorter. I already knew I was a lion. You know what? I call myself a lion. I didn't even say lioness. Um, and that's that's part of my problem right there. <laughs> because that's why I'm in therapy now. I think of myself as a lion. And you know, I you know, people be like, oh, you, you got masculine energy. I'm like, no, I don't. Well, don't cross me. And the thing about it is, is that you know, and I, I totally get what you're saying about the lamb. Um, but I still I can be soft as a lion. But I, I'm still a lion, you know, yeah. and, and you only see that part, you know, because I'm the king of my jungle and you only see the soft part. Um, well, you see the soft part. You only see the the lion part if you cross me. Right. So that's Same why here. I, I try to hold in all of that and always be soft like a lamb until I can't be. So I try to keep it cute as much as possible. But. And you know what? I always say there's Pia, just regular Pia with a capital P. And then there's I'm going to hurt somebody, <laughs> you know, with a little P. So, you know, that's what my friends tell me. They're like, when little when the Pia with the little P shows up, it's a problem. <laughs> so exactly. I try to be as sweet as I can be you know, until I can't anymore. Exactly. That's on a need to know basis. Right. That's what I call that kind of stuff. It's a need to know basis, you know. Absolutely. Well, but I did appreciate that um that 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 uh narr narration in the very beginning because that already told us what it was. Right. She told us who she was. I do have to admit though, um right off the bat at the beginning of this movie, um I had true emotion. I mean, I was truly affected by the beginning of this movie. You know, it starts Where? out and she's, you know, out? she's in the court. Yeah. And there's a guy that is trying to just get the right to see his own mother. Yes. And she has taken this his mother out of her home and put her in a nursing home and sold off all of her property. And she's using that property as her own, you know, revenue. And it angered me so badly because I thought this could definitely happen. This could happen to my grandmother. This could happen to my parents. When I'm older, this could happen to me. And just sitting there, I was boiling over. It's something about children and the elderly. When I know that somebody is hurting a child or an elderly person, my blood just boils because I'm thinking these people have become helpless, you know, as an elderly person. And you are just terrorizing these people and stealing their homes and their possessions, their family heirlooms. And so I really got extremely emotional and ticked off when this movie first began, because it was as if everybody was in with her you know for a while i thought is the judge in it with her as well it was really weird okay so i have to say that your concerns are really real because i know a person who works for the um county conservatorship and guardianship and this is it's there is an element of this movie that is actually real because they do develop relationships trustful relationships with the judges now i will say that the judge in this movie i do not feel like he was in on it at all however he trusted her he trusted her and yeah. you know and clearly we see in this movie in the later part where he says oh i know so and so and she was useless she wasn't right. in it so the judges do base their judgment on them how they feel about that guardian yeah, and that's the, what I didn't like about that particular judge. I did figure out, you know, as I continued to watch that he was not a part of it. 
But I also realize that due to him having a connection with this guardian, he was allowing her way too much leadway. That's real. And as That's far as real. I'm concerned, in the legal system, a judge should not use his his or her favoritism in court. You are supposed to be they unbiased do. and you are supposed to be following the letter of the law. And every time this woman showed up in court, no matter what, he was always agreeing and siding with this woman. Now, there was one time when he was in court and that attorney did not have the information that I was, was required say, no in, order, in oh order for... Yeah, in order for the judge to, you know, rule in his favor, he needed to get particular, you know, information. So yeah. the judge was right in his ruling, but the judge agreed with her on way too many times, way too many times. And it was hard for that guy to even obtain the information because as the guardian, she was stopping him from collecting the information that he needed. But from the judge point of view, I'm just going to say this. She appeared competent, and then the other attorney appeared not to be. Yeah, he he appeared to be. The judge doesn't know all of the behind that we know, you know? Right. I thought that the other attorney did appear to be competent. He just didn't have all of the information because he couldn't get to it. And it's really hard for the judge to yeah, accept right. his story because you don't have the information that is required. Yeah. And, you know, you can't just come to court and say that you represent somebody, but you have no paperwork to show that you represent that's that person. That's why I'm saying he didn't so appear that, because he yeah. should, as an attorney, he should know that. But also when he told the judge that he couldn't get to that person because of her, the judge should have insisted that he <laughs> allowed that she allow that man to see that woman. Because how else could he get all the documentation and everything that he needs if the woman that he's taken to court is blocking him from doing that? There should have been he some said, court order that he should have been able to see that woman. Now, in all fairness, he said your interested parties should come then. Yeah, remember, but he, he didn't even know who those interested parties. parties are. So that's another thing I was thinking. Judge, Would you, you have no idea who those competent. people are. And he and he's not able to tell you who they are. Which is why he's saying he's competent. We, you ain't gonna trash my judge now. That judge, no, that judge was not being fair. He was that not judge. being unbiased at all. And then when he brought that letter in, he made that comment that that woman was incompetent. And I'm thinking, judge, you were supposed to keep that to yourself. That's your personal opinion that you have just put into the court record. That's true. That's true. That's true. I'm just saying. But they do. I watch a lot of court TV. The <laughs> Those guardians and, and conservatorship, because it's also conservatorship and guardianship and all that kind of stuff, um, they do develop connections with, or reputations, good reputations or bad reputations with judges. And right. that is just how they see you. At least that's my experience where I'm from. I've seen it. I've had firsthand experience seeing mm -hmm. it. And um, that is how it goes. And, and yeah. it's really unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. I've I've had firsthand experience with that. And it's been at my disadvantage that the other person, you know, had this relationship with the judge. Right. So I, I was very pissed. Um, right. I didn't react the same way as the, the man in the movie. However, I was right. pissed. Now, speaking of that. OK, so when they get around to the Diane Weist character. I love the first her. thing that sent me over the edge was her physician giving up all of that HIPAA information. And I was livid. I said, first of all, you have just broke all these HIPAA laws by letting this guardian lady know all this information about her. And then when they showed up at her house, which Diane Weiss played a character named Jennifer, when they showed up at Jennifer's house, the home was immaculate. It was beautiful. It was stunning. It was. She's definitely in her right mind. And the way they got her out of that house into the nursing home facility or assisted living facility was well orchestrated. It was like a well orchestrated machine. Like these people have done this before. Oh, yeah. And I actually had tears 
when they started selling off this woman's oh, heirlooms. Yeah. But I really we... started crying because I thought in real life, this is somebody's family's memories, their history. This is stuff that is supposed to be passed on to the next generation and you people are selling it Heartless. and stealing this woman's money and Heartless. tears were rolling down my face. I was so pissed. Hold on. So, and, and I'm with you. I am so with you right there, but I wanted to talk about symbolism in all of this <clears throat> because Marla Grayson, which is the public appointed court appointed guardian Marla Grayson is the character. I noticed her, some of her uh, techniques, which when she showed up, okay, so when we first see her and she's like, I'm a lioness, you know, which is letting us know that she's a predator. All right. Her hair is dark, straight. She looks almost pale, slender, very kind of robotic. If, if, you know, if I want to describe her kind of like robotic, just very mechanical, that's a better word. All right. When she shows up to Peterson's, uh, uh, um, Jennifer Peterson, Mrs. Peterson's house in that scene, she has on yellow. Yellow is a happy color. It's, she has on a yellow suit, white shirt underneath. Yellow is happy. Yellow is friendly. Yellow is nice. And she curled her hair underneath. She put color to her cheeks. She took off the, um, when she was mechanical and robotic, she had black uh, eyeliner that was gone. She was friendly. It was her facade. And even though it was. she was trying to come off friendly, but it wasn't that friendly. You know, she was trying to smile as she talked and, all of this mess, but you could tell that underlying behind that smile was a vicious we can. one. I we mean, can. it was just not sincere, but she no, was giving wasn't. the best sincere impersonation that she could give to this uh, Jennifer character. And it worked. And you could tell that she That's has done point. that multiple times. That's just to point. try to get people to let their guard down and to trust her because later we see where she tried it again. She came to visit and she tried to smile and be sweet and no ma'am. And that's my point in bringing that up is to, you can't judge a book by its cover. You really can't, but we can see how, because if she showed up looking the way that she looked in the very beginning, talking about I'm a lioness and I'm a predator, you know, Jennifer, uh, Miss Peterson would have been like, she probably wouldn't have even opened up the door, perhaps. But she they softened her, yeah. So, you know, and then you know, we go into the scene where we see her with a wall of photos, and there's green dots and red dots. I hadn't been able, I was trying to figure out what's the green and the red. And I'm thinking green, maybe those dots, maybe, well. I think okay. the green means either it's okay for them to go and start uh, uh, to go and get these people or the money is still coming in. Maybe that's what the green dots were for and the red dots were the money is starting to trickle down and, you know, they're probably about to end their guardianship with that person which is overwhelming it's a you wall know, of people who she's destroyed their their lives she's come in and stolen all their property and sold their homes and put them in an assisted living facility and it was too many i'm i mean it was crazy and when the assisted living guy calls and tells her that one of her uh clients has passed i started to think what well, did you kill him you know what I mean? I mean, that was the first thing I thought. I said, dude, did you kill him? What? And uh, later, of course, we find out he didn't. But still, I mean, I wouldn't have put it against him. I wouldn't have put like, it past him because he's dirty, too. It's all about how much money he's going to get, you know. And <laughs> it was just too much for me. I mean, later in the movie, 
um, after Roman, who is played by Peter, when Roman finds out about this, you know, it's kind of a kidnapping. When he finds out about this kidnapping, it turns out that the lady Jennifer is his mother. Um, he sends this kind of supposed to be smart as a whip, ruthless type of attorney, which he was sort of a clown in when some did ways. You think he was smart as a whip. How smart uh, is he? Was, he, uh, <laughs> he, he was supposed to be as smart as a whip, but he came off kind of clownish. He I did. Don't know why he, yeah, he was just doing too much. I and think he and was he, cheap. The mob boss was cheap. Yeah, he, he wasn't the best man, attorney. His henchmen and the attorney, I could tell that mob the boss. The henchmen was were awful. But the attorney cheap. comes in and he pretty much kind of tries to warn her. And I don't think he did, did a good job because I felt as if he could have done a better job scaring her. <laughs> but I mean, or trying to because she's pretty out there. You know what I mean? He could have done a better job. But at some point, he offers her you know, some options, you know, take this amount of money and you'll be fine. You know, just give us his mother back and X, Y, and Z. And that's when the lion part comes out in her and she doesn't take the deal. And I'm sitting there thinking, uh, ma'am, he just pretty much told you you're going to be uh, pushing up daisies here in a bit if you don't give back this woman. Like you have kidnapped the wrong elderly woman. And on top of all of that, he offered you up to $300,000. Take the $300 and give them their mom back. But she didn't do it. I want to say this real quick. I, I want to point out about that doctor because, um, you know, uh, a lot of us have elderly and seniors in our life. And one thing that pointed that was like black glaring and blaring to me like neon lights was the doctor's role in this the doctor because we trust the doctor we trust the doctor of our senior parents or grandparents or aunts we trust the doctor i was very disheartened with the doctor's role and i wrote in real big how real is this but, you know, I, um, fortunately, I'm a part of a family who asks so many questions and then they have some medical background to where they really can't get over on us. But it makes me feel sad for the people who they can't get over on. Right. Because right. that my family really believes in a second opinion. Absolutely. Funny. But you could tell that that wasn't the only patient because they made reference that she Jerry, always does that to her parent, her patients that are problem patients. And so well, if the patient what? is her rat, her, if the patient is too needy, then she pawns them off on this guardian. And, and they use the word cherry. This is a cherry. Okay. And I, I've worked for, which I will not name of course, but I worked for an insurance company, a medical insurance company. I used to work for an insurance company too. Okay. Cherry picked. Okay. Um, so I'm familiar with that term and that's all I'm going to say. Now, what I would point out to me, just one more thing I want to say about that doctor. And, and I just want to uh, serve. I want this to serve as anyone who may even feel like they're going through anything close to this with their relatives, their senior relatives that they may be taken care of. Listen to words. Words are very important. Because when the doctor was in front of the judge and the judge asked, he said, she has no family? Question mark. The doctor responded, she has no one to take care of her but us. She didn't absolutely say no. She didn't answer his question. He asked. She has no family. She has no one to take care of her but us. See, I'll be like, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. I asked if she has a family. Okay. Objection. See, <laughs> you wouldn't be, <laughs> they wouldn't be able to take me because I'll be like, she objection. She didn't answer the question. She's shady. 
answer mm-hmm. the question. Does he does she have some family? We ain't talking about you know. But she, her reply was she has no one to take care of her but us. Yeah, and she's also a regular, so you know the judge knows her. I'm just saying <laughs> that judge. judge. <laughs> I'm not letting him off the hook. I'm telling you, Sages and Pete. He's listen innocent. here. Watch this movie and you come back and get these comments yeah, and let us innocent. know. How do you feel about that judge? That judge, but, I do not think he was in cahoots at all. But I do no. think that he was very biased. I'm just saying. That was my opinion. He's a tiny bit biased. He was always doing what this woman was. And you know what else I was thinking? They must have got a pretty good check from whoever that vape company is. Because girl, that girl, she carried that vape around with I her. Vape. It was no, super bad. close to her hand. And not only that, she brought that vape pen into court. It was sitting on her table in court. And I said, what kind of person testifies in court with a vape? Like, why is this out? So I'm thinking that they must have contributed to the making of this movie quite a bit of money to keep that vape pen out and obvious. And I'm glad that they associate it with a bad person because that stood out to me. I wrote real big on my <laughs> notes, vaping bad, bad person. It, 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 you know, I'm glad that they associated that because our, I have a child who's a teenager and there's kids from the school school is getting suspended because they're vaping at school. I did not know that that was going on until, you know, us as parents had to be notified that there's, you know, vaping at school. And I'm like, vaping at school? That's like, you know, cigarettes, bringing cigarettes to school or whatever. Like back when my, you know, was growing up, we didn't have vaping. There was some cigarettes, but there was never, there was never any cigarettes at school. Yeah. I, I, a couple years ago, Maybe like, four or five years ago, I caught one of my coworkers vaping under his desk. I just happened to walk his over desk. to his desk. He was hiding. I happened you to went under his over. desk. Yeah. How do you hide? I you to- took a break and went under the desk. Right. I happened to just walk over to his desk, and he was under his desk vaping, and he was like coming out from under his desk, and I just I don't even make no sense. I, I tried to play it off as if it was normal because I just didn't even want to be bothered, but I was just like, dude, you don't vape at work, and, and just go outside hey, on a break. Do that make any sense? How you gonna take a break <laughs> under your desk? It's a I desk. Said, oh my gosh, you were under his desk trying to hide and, and take a few puffs off his vape real quick. It, I, I tried and I tried to act as if it was as natural as anybody else because I just didn't want to be I didn't want to be involved. It was hilarious to me though. I thought, wow. You're like, so close to the elevator. You could have just went outside, baked real quick and came back in. And nobody would have known. That is so crazy. I mean, the workforce, everybody has somebody who works with them that just is a little weird. But um under your desk, that's like smoking a cigarette under your desk. Yep, I said okay. I just ignored it, honey. I acted like I did not notice anything. That is not my business. I am not your manager, so let me just go on about my business. But can I just say, at some point, there was what they like a jailbreak attempt uh, from the the uh, the assistant living. And I just want to say that was the worst jailbreak attempt I've ever seen in my life. And I was absolutely pissed off that they had not moved that car closer. She is the elderly. How is she going to run to your car? And I was just like, what? Okay, wait a minute. The planning was awful. Wait, I love that scene. I hated it. The planning was terrible. First of all, this is a movie, so it has to be dramatic. It was a comedy section. I thought these are the worst gangsters I've ever seen in my life. Did you see how they were dressed? They had those um, polo shirts with the sweaters tied around their neck and those like kind of mute type colors, but still looking rough in the face. I mean, it was (laughs) so ridiculous the way that they tried to get this lady out of here. And I thought this could have gone so much easier. Everything could have gone so much simpler. Wow. And then at the first of all, when you decided to ask this man, where, I know, but when you asked the man where the woman was, 
and the man lied. <laughs> instead of instead of looking around before you tase the man, oh, you, he did not look around. You caused the, the alarms to go off because you tased him in front of some senior citizen girl, guy who okay, saw you. Yeah. You he could have just said, grabbed him I'm going to tase you. Yes, or you could have grabbed him by the arm and started walking slowly with the man yeah. and then say That's in his true. ear, I got this taser and I'm not afraid to tase you. Where is this man's mother? Or they where is Jennifer? Play a game of golf. Where is Jennifer? Yes. And they, he could have found Jennifer that way. The guys he was with were very intimidating. And next thing you know, it's all kinds of chaos. Everybody's dead. I mean, it was just too much going on. And then when he gets to the door, it was so <laughs> stupid that the people that work there, the man is holding a gun and he's asking you to open the door. But you idiots who are just wearing scrubs. Girl, are I said, that's a lie. I said, that's a lie. Me? You know and what I'm saying? I'm not protecting this exit when you have a gun. Get I'm going. I, that was really a falsehood and a crime against cinema because they was black. Go on, go on, take the woman. I'm not about to fight you with a gun. And then it made no sense that here you are, this grown, supposedly seasoned gangster. You finally get this woman to the exit, and this lady and her girlfriend and a and a pillowcase or a bucket or whatever that was tricked you and got you beat down to the ground. I mean, seriously. No, they wasn't seasoned. I told you the boss man was cheap. He, well, they it's were like supposed to be people. Stage, I mean, they, the they were the worst yeah. gangsters in, in history. They were worse than the, the fake were gangsters on, on General Hospital. They were on sale gangsters. You know how you can pay full price for gangsters or some is 50% off? Uh, okay. I could have <laughs> broke her out of there. I mean, come on. I could have got her out of there to route. the car. He went the cheap route. I realize that they have to have this for the movie. Otherwise, the movie would be 10 minutes and over. But I what? wasn't for it. I'm going to say that I, I liked, and I think they tried to do this to humanize the gangster. Um, I call him Mob Boss. Mm -hmm. Roman like, was his name. He liked donuts and yeah. shakes. And crying. I like donuts, too. Yeah, so I, I, I liked him. Coming. I was rooting for him. I was on his side um, until the end. But yeah, I was on his side. I, and, you know, normally for me, it was two bad guys in this movie. And, you know, you had to pick which bad guy you were going to follow, two? which bad guy you were going to rock with. Were you going to rock with Roman or are you going to rock with her? I was rocking with Roman. And mm, I'm just saying. I mean, you've got to hire quality gangsters. That's all. <laughs> he got them on sale. That's why I said in the beginning, he was cheap. Because you get what you pay for. No matter what you're paying for. <laughs> you that was terrible because they were supposed to be a part of the Russian mob. And I'm thinking the Russian mob, the real life Russian mob, they are ashamed <laughs> of <Girl>. this betrayal. <laughs> they, don't, they don't work like that. I'm just saying. <laughs> Now, what did you think about, um, so spoiler, spoiler alert. So the reason why Marla is going so hard in the paint, I call it going hard in the paint, which is a basketball reference, but the reason why she's going so hard on this is because there's undocumented diamonds that she found in Mrs. Peterson's safe. Safe deposit box. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is the reason why she refused that $300,000 that the attorney came to her with because she knows that the diamonds that are undocumented are worth millions and millions. And so she counter offered with $5 million, I believe. And he was like, oh, please, you know. <laughs> and that's when he went, because didn't he start out with $150,000? 250,000. Okay. And then okay. he moved it up to 300,000. Yeah. Yeah. And she, she told him like, to go back and ask your boss for more. But what I thought was if you know that these are bad people and you also know it's going to cost 
but she she did know because he threatened her life at the point. He told oh, her yeah, that yeah, lady yeah. had yeah. some very powerful friends, and that and then he did the this. So she knew that he didn't mean we're going to get you a nice haircut, you know. So um, I thought, take the money and run. Even if you have these diamonds, give the diamonds back because you're going to have to fence these diamonds, which opens you up to more uh, danger. I would rather just take the money and give this woman back than try to fence these diamonds and try to, you know, you're opening yourself up to the possibility that you might wake up tomorrow and have no feet. And, you know, and then Get the police up. might come after you because you tried to fix these diamonds and, and give him his mama back. That's what I was thinking. But Let she, me ask you she was a beast. Let me ask you something, because this is something, a theme that has happened over and over in cinema. And I see it, and he, I didn't know I was going to recognize it in this movie because I've watched this movie before, but I watched it again because I knew we were going to review it. Mm -hmm. And I said, shut up. So now let me ask you, Pia. They say in cinema, when they show a woman is strong and confident, she must die or you see the end of her like her business crumbling and she's homeless. Like, you know, you see the takedown. They say in cinema, and this goes way back to like the 50s and everything, they will build a woman up to be strong. But before the movie ends, you must see her ending in some kind of form. Um, I don't know. I know that in most movies, I love a strong, independent woman um, because a lot of times we have the women that are the damsel in distress. And I think we've had enough of those. I'm over it. I love a strong, independent woman who makes boss moves and does her thing, holds down her family and friends. I love that. However, if this strong, independent woman is someone like Marla in this movie, I absolutely <laughs> want her taken down. I absolutely want her gone because what she is doing is taking down other people. If you are strong and independent, that's great. But don't use your knowledge and your strength to destroy others. Otherwise, I I, I'm you. team Roman and I want you gone because you are destroying other people. But if she's just a regular, you know, strong woman who's making business moves who are legitimate, then I'm here for it. Yeah. Cause she 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 did say I don't lose, I'm not going to lose. She said you're not playing fair. She said take me in court and battle me there, but this is not fair. Which at that point they were trying to which just I thought was a little comical because everything she was doing was not fair. And taking him to court, take if they took her to court, it still wouldn't be fair because you've got the doctors working for you. You've got this judge who loves you and you are getting away with this in court. Every yes, single case her. that you have, you know what I mean? So it's not fair either way. So I was thinking, listen, you've got, this movie makes you pick between two evils. It really does. Do you want the evil, wish I was a good mobster Roman? Or do you want the evil, I am good at what I do? And that's the thing about her. She was good at what she does. She was very strong. She was very intelligent. She very was very calculating woman. and manipulating. She was perfect. But she was doing everything that was illegal. If she yep. was working a legal business, she would be a great character you know, to have. She as was far working as business to, illegally. Yes, it, exactly. If she was doing it all legal and she really cared about these people, like she cared so much, if she really cared a lot, a lot. She, if she cared a lot, then she she would have been a perfect example of a strong, independent woman. But this was a strong, independent, guilty woman. But l let me say this. I like the fact that they did not make her have to use her sexuality. Oh, yeah, I did like that. I love I that. Like that. She did not have to show TNA to be, uh, the, to her, be the head of her right, business her or to get out of, yeah. And absolute part about this movie 
was when she goes to the uh, senior facility and tries to get more information out of Jennifer, and then she tries to get smart with her and she chokes her out. That oh, was right. perfect because she used Jennifer because she knew that Jennifer was about that life. And she, I felt that she set that up for her to be attacked so she could go back to court. Mm -hmm. Um, and prove that Jennifer was not suitable to live on her own and she wasn't, she shouldn't have visitors because the first time that she went to see her to get information, Jennifer played her. She told her nothing and she told her he is coming and she would not give her any information. And I appreciated that. She, Jennifer was a senior citizen, that. but Jennifer was not a dumb senior citizen by any means. And when she told her, well, what's today's date? She said, oh, the eighth was last week. So she knew exactly who was coming for her, when they were going to come for her, said, and that Jennifer the was soon going to meet up with me. that. Absolutely. She said, I am the worst. I am the worst mistake you ever made. You definitely kidnapped the wrong woman. And I appreciated that she I stood up for herself. I life. I got my life. I loved it. That's my favorite part of the whole entire movie. Yep, I loved it. She did a great job. Diane Weiss did a great job. You know what I loved about Diane Weiss is that I'm used to seeing her in the mother roles but frail kind of right a little fragility there you know uh, but in this one no and i love the counterpart of them trying to make her frail right and she wasn't it was perfect it was perfect she I played like, that beautifully Diane, come through you better come yeah. through oh my god i wish she was my auntie like <laughs> yeah she I played like, that beautifully and that's why i was even more excited when she tried to choke the hell out of her i said oh god i like that I, I loved it i was happy that she tried to choke that woman out because she deserved it but i was angry that it was all caught on camera and none of the vo none of the uh, audio was caught on camera so they have no idea what she was saying to provoke this woman to try to choke her out which was perfectly planned but I was happy that she was defending herself and I wish she would have made it I happen. didn't like that <laughs> I didn't like it because here's the thing my point of view she's been so smart even drugged up they gave her a cocktail of drugs to make her because remember she ordered the worst she said i'll make your life a living hell mm -hmm. and she ordered it and it happened and so she, okay she was still smart enough to know she said what day what, what day is it oh i'm the worst mistake you'll ever make you know and she just laughed oh i love that because i'll be laughing sometimes when people make mistakes with me when they be coming after me and i, I just laugh because that's all you could do you know right I, i'm not i ain't evil Okay, but anyway, not to say that she was, but I'm just saying, so you go from feeling like she's sharp even under these medications. Come on, Diane. I mean, not Diane. Well, her name is Diane, but Jennifer, Miss Peterson. Then you make the mistake of choking her out in the open. That yeah, I thought, I I thought like that. that she was doing that. And I thought that the reason she did that was this was after the failed breakout. So she yeah. she's already upset that she didn't actually get free. Yeah. Then you're sitting there and you're talking 
extra greasy and crazy to her. You have pissed <laughs> this woman off to the nth degree, and now it's time to choke you out. Now that is where crazy Pia comes in. Um, I have tried to deal with you the proper way. I have tried to not hurt you, ma'am. But now you are in here talking to me crazy, telling me what you're going to do to me. You are in control of me, X, Y, and Z. They weren't able to break me out of here. Girl, listen, it's between you and me. One of us has got to go. I'm just saying. So she was triggered into choking that so woman she, out. You, you just thought she was uh, poked too much, like poking she the mom. Poked too much. You can't bear. keep on poking a bear until That's all true. of a sudden you're going to get mauled. You know what they used to say? They used to say that whole, um, what was that saying? You mess with a bull, you get the horns. And I just felt like she just, she just got the horn. It just happened to be around her throat. And unfortunately, she was able to use it in court. And, you know, but um, the, uh, the you second know best. When the I second, put it in that context, poking uh, the bear. Because, like, in my mind, you shouldn't poke the bear. I'm the bear. No, don't poke me. No. Um, and when you poke me too much, then I don't know what I might do. Okay. So now putting it in that context, I get it. Because I was like, they played her to be so smart. But then she's not smart, but yeah. she was poked to. She just much. kept on messing with that woman. And it's like, at some yeah. point, you explode if poke. people just keeps bothering you and bothering you. You're just like, you know what? Shout out to everybody you who know. poked me. Yeah, you're like, you know what? <laughs> Your neck is looking great. <laughs> okay, like, stop messing with me. But the, I think that. Life and dice. I, we were trying our best not to make this review this long, and it has gone uh, quite long. So I'm going to propel us a little bit. Um, the tranquilizer in the butt. <laughs> so that was so Who's butt? Who's butt? beautiful. When um, the guardian, what's her name again? Marla. When she was in oh, the well, she got garage, one and, she got put and in they the tranquilized her in the butt. But you know what made me laugh? These crazy gangsters. They threw her over in the trunk. And I thought every trunk has a release latch. I said, "What the hell is that? Why you in the trunk?" <laughs> she can That's where the, the film. I watch yeah. way too many crime televisions. I well, just, no, it's you know, true. I can't. It's she true. could have released the trunk hatch had she woken up, but she, of course she didn't wake up. But you know, after they kidnap her, they end up uh, finding her uh, girlfriends, and she got beat down. And I didn't cry. I wish she would have died. I again. Oh my gosh! When I text you about how I thought about the ending, you was like, "What?" <laughs> no, I'm talking about. I'm talking about the girlfriend. I, that's what I'm saying. Uh, what? When I told you how I felt about the end, you were like, "Oh man!" But you wouldn't her to die, the girlfriend. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because okay, we propelling right. Okay. He told her, "Look." I got surveillance on your mama. Ain't this your mama? She said that psycho bitch can die. I now let me ridiculous. tell you something. I I'm familiar with that type of not saying me, but you know, you can't make somebody care. It's funny. Now that was comical because it's funny that you think just because you care about your mama so much that somebody else care about their mama so much, you don't know what they went through. That's you have true. no idea. She let her know that psycho bitch could die. Okay, so now what you got? What they had was her girlfriend, who she cares so much about. Now, if this was a real movie, I mean, it was a real movie, but I mean, the movies that I... If it was a real life, yeah. They would, okay, well, shit, what about her? You know, we got your girlfriend. Shit, you got to care about somebody. What about your big toe? Shit. But that was so weird for me to understand. Um, she didn't care about those people she didn't care about her mom and i was so surprised that she really cared about the girlfriend i not. thought i said you are so cold and calculating this whole time how can you actually care about this girlfriend and you then know. i thought how can the girlfriend care about her when she is a horrible person but yeah. then when you think about it they're both two horrible people people together <laughs> together I, was, I didn't want the girlfriend to get killed, but I did want her I to did, take that. I wanted her, to, I wanted her to take that butt whooping like nobody's business. Because you know what? I said you deserve that butt kicking, girl, because you were she dirty. Did. 
you and that woman have done dirty and if they beat you up, I'm I'm all right with it. I feel like because I don't let me make this statement, a disclaimer, I don't know in real life, but I feel like when you're a gangster and you want to get to somebody, you got to get to who they love. Absolutely. Love her girlfriend. So you show her the mama, she don't care. Okay, well then let me skip to the next live. I got uh your girlfriend. You don't care about your girlfriend, you got some kids, you know, you cousins, you know, like I said, your big toe, you want that to walk good. What you didn't threaten about? her very well at all. And you know, after and, but, and, and, and let me say this real quick. It that was where the movie failed. Because at the same time that they did her, they were terrorizing her girlfriend and didn't say that. Yeah, I think they failed so many places, actually, now that we're reviewing it and I'm thinking about it even more. Um, you know, afterwards, when she didn't take his deal again, um, because she was... The what was that? The, the, girl had, the girl has balls of steel balls of steel she refuses to accept his deal she asked him for 10 million dollars and he tells her he's not going to give her 10 million dollars he yeah. wants her to give him his mother back or he's going to uh end her and she still didn't care so when he tells his fake gangsters yep. to get rid of her the way they tried to get rid of her and i thought this is really dumb and i, I thought work. I thought that was dumb and I knew I it wasn't going to work. work because I'm like, why did y'all at least tranquilize her again? Or like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was just, it was, it was ridiculous. And more I was so, I was so upset that she survived. I mean, it really bothered me. And the, it was funny, her at the gas station, you know, dripping, soaking wet and tried to get her butt back home. That was, that was funny. But as the movie trickles forward, when she gets the drop on Roman, I said, how does this work? Oh, no, I didn't like that. How does this work? Um, and, but I knew he wasn't going to die either when she tries to blow him up in the car. I said, there's no way this dude is dying. They're going to, you know, so both of them was able to be saved. And then at the end, when they came up with this stupid idea to work okay. together, that's where he lost me completely, completely. There is no way after you did this to my mother and then you sold off her house and all of her belongings that I would ever agree yeah. to work with you for any amount of money. That was, I didn't like that, but at the same time I see where they still wanted us as an audience not to forget he's a bad person. He's not a good guy because remember what they did. And this is kind of brilliant. They make you choose. And you said it between who the, the bad guys. We have two bad guys to choose from, you, you know, but at the end, they're like, they're both bad guys. Yeah, they were. They were both bad guys. And I chose. You know, I chose. <laughs> and. I was I was going for him because I said, you know what? She kidnapped his mama. So I'm team Roman. But then in the end, I wasn't team any of them. You he know, I, I was he's really a bad guy. Off in the end when they decided to work together. It was when they did the pan back and you saw her wall and it was like a thousand or so more. Ten thousands, uh, thousands of people that she had done this guardianship thing to with his help. And I said, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, she has got to go. So in, in the, the yeah, so the in little the wall end, that was a lot to us in the very beginning, yeah, that was a lot. We were shocked as an audience, like, oh my God, that many people. Yep. So in the end, I was on Mr. Philstrom. I think his name is Philstrom. I ended up being on Mr. Philstrom's side. And how he ended her, I thought it was beautifully written. Now, what I want to say, back to symbolism just a little bit. I think it's brilliant, the fact that what she did. Now, I don't think it's realistic. I thought it was very stupid 
them following and chasing the car and saying, this can't be where they live. And she's hiding out in the garage. She almost get caught. And she's like, follow them. And then she, you know, puts on a little short It makes sense. Like you people are guardian thieves. You are not criminals like that. That just exactly. did not make sense. That part of the movie was dumb. Oh, I can't cuss. I would say dumb as F. Yeah. Um, that was dumb. But then we get that part brings us to the end, the ending sequence, which I thought was brilliant because either he was going to die or be in her custody. I thought that was brilliant, but the way it led up was stupid as heck. Stupid as heck. But that choice, either you'll die or be in my custody. Welcome to my custody. Um, with the symbolism, though, I thought that was brilliant because he wakes up, sees her yellow shoes, right? When he gets wheeled on down the white hall road, he has, I don't know if those are yellow socks, yellow boots. They match her yellow heels. He has on like a white hospital robe. She's wearing a white dress. That lets us know they've become the same. And they that's what I didn't like. I thought that was so ridiculous. I'm thinking, who in the world is doing that? Who is offering to work together? This makes no sense. And at first I thought they're going to fool us because he's going to give her this offer just to make sure that he gets away from her guardian claim that she has on him and gets his mom I back. And then he's going to... And then he's going to handle her. But yeah. no, yeah. we find out that they honestly did work together and he shared his donuts with her and everything. And I was just like, what? Uh, no, I was, I, was, I was done. I was done with that movie and thought, did I just waste almost two hours of my life? I mean, I was so ticked. No, because it's awareness, because some of some of this is real. Oh, well, I was aware because you know I'm a true crime junkie. So I, yeah, was, yeah, all, but, I was just like, man. Yeah, I was going to say, this is not a waste because it opens up people's eyes whose eyes are closed. Hiccups. So, um, peeps and sages, we have a rating scale. Our ratings are yellow hearts or broken hearts. Broken hearts are for the movies that we don't like as much. Um, it's on a scale of one to five hearts. And I'm going to give this particular movie three hearts, three yellow hearts. I give it two yellow hearts. I give it two yellow solid hearts. I don't watch Salt Lake City Real Housewives. People try to tell me, they tried to entice me with saying that, you know, and everything that I'm getting ready to say right now is alleged and not to be used as facts. But they try to say that Jen Shaw is like the uh, Marla in this movie. I don't watch the show. What is your um, opinion? Um, no, I would say she's not like Marla because <laughs> Marla was actually strong and independent and confident, and she was oh, with you know, it in her. She was with it in her mind, and I don't feel that Jen is any of those things. Um, and that's just my opinion. Jen comes off as a very needy, very selfish, um, very um, not all with it in the mind type of person. However, oh, allegedly, oh, or, day. Yeah. Day. so opposed, you know, supposedly, allegedly, for several, several years, I think they said 10 years, her and her group of people they're trying to say that she was the mastermind behind all of this yeah, and then allegedly that's stealing uh from the elderly so that's the only part that we could say she was like marla you know her alleged victims are the elderly um but yeah i'm looking well, forward to her case being, common as elderly people. yeah that's the only thing i think that that her and that lady have in common um plus marla was able to turn it into something big and make billions of dollars until she was well, ended. Good, and you know she didn't get she didn't get arrested um but jen got arrested i'm just i don't know that's the only thing that they have in common elderly people allegedly 
Okay. <laughs> Peace and say Jesus. Those of you who have seen this movie already, get down in the comments. Give us your yellow heart rating or your broken heart rating. Let us know what you think about this movie, about the actors, about certain plots, certain, I mean, sequences. What was your favorite scene? What scene did you think was absolute buffoonery? Just let us know, you know, get down in the comments. Absolutely. Absolutely. I enjoyed you guys. Sages, thank you for allowing me to invade your channel. And to the peeps, you guys know I love you the most. You guys are the best. I love you guys. And thanks for watching this review. And like we always tell you, you can always hit the three dots at the top to speed the review up. You don't have to watch it this long. I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you so much. I echo the same as usual. And Sages, thank you so much. And, you know, just like she said, show up and let us know, you know, yellow or broken heart. What did you think about this movie? And Peach, thank you so much for loving me and embracing me. I embrace you guys as well. You guys are so sweet. I love you all. And, you know, look forward to more movie reviews is that right that is right and as we say until next time bye <laughs>